Hey guys, what's up? Derek here from Bomb Socks with more Bomb Bites, where we feast upon the words of Christ one bite at a time. So today in the Come Follow Me, I want to get into a little bit. I'm going to kind of spread myself out in the first few chapters of 1 Corinthians as we get into a very interesting and relevant topic, starting in chapter 2. Now, you go through about the first five verses of chapter 2. So he's speaking to the people that he taught when he served his mission in Corinth. And now he's referring back to these. It says, And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellence, Excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. Anybody who's taught the gospel understands that comment. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Now, I have something I had written down in my footnotes. I don't know when I did this. It was probably in some teaching in service that I was in, but I, I thought it was powerful enough to write it down. My teaching isn't that great, but I know one thing, that I am not the teacher. The Holy Ghost is the true teacher. Now, in the first few weeks of my seminary lessons, when I'm trying to introduce them to the real teacher who is the Holy Ghost, I always tell them, it's like, you go home and tell your parents that you have the best teacher in the church that has ever been in the church. And that's the Holy Ghost. It's not me. No, I'm just a dude who's going to hang out and be very clumsy in my presentation. I'm going to mess stuff up. I'm going to misspell words on, you know, PowerPoint slides or whatever like that there. I'm clumsy. I'm messy. But the Holy Ghost is really good at what he does. When you start thinking that you are the teacher, that you are the one who's going to change people's lives, it's going to go downhill fast because you're just a person. The Holy Ghost is going to be the one who is going to show share that wisdom and that knowledge with people. You get to present the message, but the Holy Ghost is the one who's going to teach that. So good little message right there, particularly as you continue on in chapter two. You go down to verse number nine, but as it is written, I hath not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. But God hath revealed them unto us by his spirit. For the spirit searcheth all things. The footnote says explores or investigates, which I think is so cool. We should be having the Holy Ghost with us when we are exploring and we are investigating these things. Yea, the deep things of God, the deep things of God, whatever those are, they sometimes will get people into a lot of trouble, but that's why you've got to have the Spirit with you. For what man knoweth the things of man save the Spirit of man which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. Verse 12, now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. I love the New Living Translation. The New Living Translation says this, and we have received God's spirit, not the world's spirit, so that we can know the wonderful things that God has freely given us. Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. The word foolish is an interesting word. It's just, you're being dumb, you're being stupid, you're being an imbecile, all of that right there. So with that in mind, let me backtrack for a second to chapter 1, and you're going to see this idea of what it means to truly be a fool. So chapter 1 verse 18, for the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but to us which are saved, it is the power of God. So the things that we believe often are accounted as foolishness unto us. You're going to see that all the time. Whenever you are sharing the gospel with someone, there's going to be people out there who think you are foolish that you believe in the Book of Mormon, or you believe in Joseph Smith, or that you believe in certain things that happen in church history, or you believe in certain doctrines. They're going to look at you like you are a fool. Let me keep going with that. Verse 19, for it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world. For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to them that believe. For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block, and unto the Greeks foolishness. Again, those who are wanting wisdom often will look at the things that are wise as foolish. But unto them which are called, both the Jews and the Greeks, 
Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God, because the foolishness of God, I love this statement, is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. You go down to verse 27. Many of you can relate to this. But God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise, and God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. You know, if you're called to teach in the church and you're just like, I don't have much experience in the church, and the Lord's like, I don't care. Do you have a testimony? Let's do this, right? He picks a 14-year-old boy to be able to introduce a new dispensation. You see all the time, Moses, who couldn't speak very well. Enoch, who was but a lad. You got all these people who are just like, I can't do this. And the Lord's like, hey, I don't care. I am going to call you, and then I will qualify you as well. You might seem like you're a fool, and that's okay. Look over at chapter 3, verses 18 and 19. Let no man deceive himself. If any man among you seemeth to be wise in this world, let him become a fool, that he may be wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, he taketh the wise in their own craftiness. I think the moment when you start thinking, yes, I've finally got this figured out, I think you're in deep trouble. There's a powerful thing to be able to stay humble and to recognize that just because you keep getting smarter doesn't mean necessarily you are more wise. So now you go over to chapter 4, verse number 10, and this concludes this wonderful thought. We are fools for Christ's sake. So I think a good goal here is to, and it's going to sound weird, but become a fool for Jesus Christ's sake. And these things that the world often looks at as, you're foolish because of that. You're like, yeah, and I believe the church is true, and I believe in Joseph Smith the prophet. I know that a 14-year-old boy entered a grove of trees. I know that he saw an angel. I know that he saw gold plates. I know that he translated those plates in a very, very short amount of time, and those plates became a book that has changed people's lives. To some people, that seems so foolish, but I am so grateful that I have that knowledge. Is it going to make me a fool to some people? Yep, absolutely, and I am a fool for Christ's sake, and I am grateful for it. So so the goal is, brothers and sisters, be a fool for Jesus Christ's sake, and I think it will bless your life. The wisdom of the world is going to be out there, and it's going to seem like foolishness, but I am grateful to be able to have that knowledge, and I know that it is true. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks for subscribing, and thanks as always for sharing. So grateful that you do that. Please go check out our amazingly comfortable gospel theme socks at bombsocks.com, and you guys have a great day, and we'll see you next time. Godspeed. Bye-bye.